there are elements of our culture that anybody can do. Barbie and Ken can wear desi clothes, if you're South Asian, for example, or Arab or Ethiopian, whatever the cultural you want to put in there. They can wear the clothes, they can listen to the music, they can watch the movies, they can eat the food. That's service surface level. On a deeper level of the iceberg is family values. I'm Chaplain Adil Zay. Welcome to our series, Heart Works. Today's video, we're covering Generation Gap. Pasasam said that whoever doesn't show mercy towards the youth and whoever does not acknowledge the rights of elders is not from us. So we have a problem in our Muslim community that we have not fostered healthy intragenerational dynamics and healthy intragenerational family dynamics, in particular in the Muslim community. This matters because unless we work to remedy the situation, we're going to continue having dysfunctional families with passive aggressive behaviors and resentment and other problems we manifested from a behavioral and medical perspective as well. When I was in Harvard Seminary, I took a course on mental health from an Islamic perspective. We covered a book by Marwan Dwari in regards to counseling and psychotherapy for Arabs and Muslims. In that book, he mentions that when migrant Muslim families coming from Muslim majority countries come to non-Muslim majority countries, their anxiety skyrockets. It's like they're constantly in final exam or end of the year report mode or Super Bowl prep, whatever example works for you. So that kind of stress and anxiety is how they're perpetually living in. From the youth perspective, you have this idea that we haven't really formulated our Muslim identity and synchronized that with our American identity. There's a constant confusion and then the various dynamics of identity, the classism, the gender, the the racial dynamics, the cultural dynamics, they all play a part in this confusion of identities. When I was in Hartford Seminary, I had a roommate who was retired. I mean, it was like 65 year old South Asian man. And it was me, this, you know, late 20s or whatever it was, kind of punk kid thinking he's all cool for school. And that relationship that he and I had was kind of weird in the beginning because I was like, oh man, much uncle, this is not going to be a good situation. He's like, oh, punk kid, this is not going to be good. But we actually became really good friends. And we talked about our stories, very vulnerable conversations, what our families were going through, what I was going through, what, what his family was going through. And we actually hung out a couple of times when I went to DC at his home and also we met at like Caribou Coffee or something. For the youth, I want you to keep in mind that your parents, if they migrated, depending on when they came, but whenever they came, in some ways they're still stuck in that time zone, right? So if my parents came in the 70s, for example, they're still in some ways mentally stuck in Pakistan 1975, right? It's like a back to the future kind of moment, again, right? And then you're bringing them to America so they'll still operate with that lens and the memories of what was happening at that time. There's an element of the cultural iceberg, and you can look it up online as well, the cultural iceberg. On the tip of the iceberg is surface level culture. Surface level culture is when there are elements of our culture that anybody can do. Barbie and Ken can wear desi clothes, if you're South Asian, for example, or Arab or Ethiopian, whatever the cultural you want to put in there. They can wear the clothes, they can listen to the music, they can watch the movies, they can eat the food. That's service surface level. On a deeper level of the iceberg is family values, how you treat your guest. When I travel to different countries, the first things I'm looking for are places to see, uh, historical sites or tourist sites, great restaurants to eat. Where is the local masjid or cool masjid, cool Muslim community? Where can I go to find things? The first thing my mom says is, oh, we have family there. We have a second cousin. We have this and that. Because 
that programming is part of their deeper culture of the iceberg, the bottom, bottom part of the iceberg. But they don't understand that we don't think that way because we've only been given the top of the iceberg, right? So I've addressed the problem with the parents, but I also want to go into what the youth are going through. They're engaging in a lot of risk-taking behaviors and they're still negotiating those identities with their Muslim identity. How much to be American and engage in these problematic behaviors and how much to be Muslim and how much to be South Asian or to be Ethiopian or Arab, whatever else it may be, right? And it's gender is different as well. But the way forward through all of this is to have vulnerable conversations. And it has to come from the parents. So you all, if you're a college student or young person watching this, you have to tell them that Chaplain Adil told me to tell you this. A lot of times what happens is people in my positions and similar youth directors and people put into those kinds of roles, not even, not even youth directors, they are asked, can you talk to my son? Can you talk to my daughter? Like that, like the problem is the son or the daughter, right? The problem is not your son, it's not your daughter. It's not even you, it's not your spouse. The problem is your relationship. The problem is your emotional connection. Parents are seen on a pedestal. They, they know everything, that they are the wise ones from a very early age, guiding us, helping us walk, feeding us, taking care of us. And youth are the ones that are, you know, complaining, you, know, you hit your knee on the table, you have a boo-boo, you cry, parents are helping you, you're hungry, they change diaper, whatever it may be, right? But we get to a point, the parents have to be vulnerable with their children, have to reverse it a little bit. If the child comes and complains to their parents they've been bullied, then the parent is in this wise position to see, okay, this is how we're gonna problem solve. But if the parent says, I know that was hard because I was bullied too in X, Y, and Z way. Now, this power dynamic is equalized and they can have a strong connection and a stronger relationship moving forward. If you found value in this video, hit that like button. And if you want more, check out our series, HeartWorks, 40 Ways to Reconnect to Your Heart and to the Hearts of Others. Thank you. Take care. Assalamu alaikum.